What's up guys, this is Mike the Detroit Borg with a look at the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Now I know this isn't a new phone, it's about as old as the iPhone 4S, but what's new is how it's being sold. Google is finally selling this phone directly from the Google Play Store, off contract. So you can buy this off contract for $399. So what you get is basically the international GSM version. This doesn't have LTE capabilities. This is just a 3G phone. So this will work with AT&T or T-Mobile. I will be using this with AT&T. So if you're not familiar with what the Galaxy Nexus is, it's basically Google's reference phone for Android 4.0 or Ice Cream Sandwich. So what this means is that it's pure Android 4.0. There's no overlay, there's no touch whiz from Samsung, it's just pure Google Android. So this also means that this phone is a lot more likely to be updated right away as soon as software is released because it doesn't have to deal with manufacturers or carriers that have to push out software updates that are compatible with all the software that they've installed on their phones. Now quickly getting the specs out of the way, we have a Super AMOLED screen, 4.65 inches with 720p resolution, so that's 720 by 1080 a 1 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, 1 gig of RAM, a 5 megapixel camera, a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, 16 gigs of internal storage, and NFC as well, so this, is, this has the NFC technology that works with Google Wallet. We have a 1750 milliamp battery and it supports Bluetooth 3.0. So take a look around the box on the front we have the Samsung Galaxy Nexus in its purest Android 4.0 form on the side we have the profile of the device in fact you can see it has a curved slightly curved glass screen which is made possible thanks to AMOLED on the top we have nothing on the side we have the other side of the device on the bottom we have our sensitive information which we're not going to share on the back we have this seal which tells us do not accept if it's broken on the back we have Google Samsung and down here we have some information regarding FCC and that sort of thing so let's go ahead and crack the seal and make it official let's pop the lid and there is the Galaxy Nexus alright so before we get to the Galaxy Nexus let's see what's in this compartment down here so we have a little wall USB adapter just like the iPhone adapter very small cube like alright so our Samsung adapter indeed is very shiny so looks pretty cool alright so that's all there is to it now let's pick up the phone and I believe we're gonna have more stuff under there so there is our phone and we're gonna set that aside for just a moment looks like it's already peeling off alright so under the tray is some more stuff so we get our quick start guide which looks very boring so we're gonna set that aside we have headphones so it looks like we have a pair of in-ear headphones we also have a little USB or micro USB charging cable again that black shiny plastic and we have our 1750 milliamp battery so enough with the bit players and let's get to the star of the show the Galaxy Nexus itself so if you have questions go to google.com front slash Nexus uh, this is covered in this little plastic sheet with this nice handy little tab to lift up alright put that aside on the back we have another piece of plastic which is barely holding on and it's just telling us that we need to remove the back panel to install the battery let's remove that alright before I proceed I'm going to install this battery here which is going to be a little tricky because I have no fingernails alright there you go pops right off now before we put the cover back on you can see your slot for the sim card this is a standard mini sim it's not a micro sim we have, of course we have the camera and flash and that's about it so let's go ahead and put the cover back on alright so let's take a look around the hardware itself so on the back of course we have this removable back plate with the Samsung and Google branding there is no other carrier branding of course down here we have our speaker up here we have the thumbnail port for peeling this back it comes off pretty easily even though I have no fingernails it works pretty well on the center we have the camera which is a 5 megapixel autofocusing camera with uh, 1080p video recording and of course below that we have a little LED flash now on the bottom of course we have a micro USB connector for charging or porting data to it we have a microphone and we have a little headphone jack now on the left side we have our volume rocker of course up and down on the other side we have the power on and off button and here we have our pogo connectors 
Now looking at the front of the device, you can see we have a 1.3 megapixel camera as well as an ambient light sensor and proximity sensor right next to the earpiece. Now if we look at the lower chin, you can see there are no backlit buttons. So there's you don't see the home key, the back key, or the recent apps key. All of that is now virtual, so they appear on the screen. But what you may notice here is a little cut out here for an LED indicator. So if you have messages or notices, this indicator will flash periodically. Now we're ready to boot this up for the first time, so let's just tap and hold that power button. You hear it vibrate. So we get a little animation that really shows off the uh, Super AMOLED screen so you can see very vivid colors and very deep contrast. The blacks of the image look exactly like the bezel, very black, very dark, very deep, looks very sharp. Alright, so we can get started. So of course I'm in the United States, but you can change that just by tapping. Let's go to start. I don't have a SIM card installed right now, so we're going to skip that process. And I need to select my Wi-Fi network, so let's go to Time Capsule. And I just need to enter in my passcode. We're going to select Automatic Date and Time. And then click Next. And now we have three options here. We can sign into our Google account, get an account, or not now. So I'm going to say not now because we want to see exactly what a new user would get when he first unbox this phone. So let's click Next. And I just need to type in my name. Now if you logged in with your Google account, it would know your name automatically. So I won't have to do this step. Alright, I'm just going to agree to Google services to let them install software updates as they please. And my setup is complete, so let's go to finish and take a look. Now quickly taking a look at the stock interface here, of course you can see we have several home screens here. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And the one in the center is the default home screen. On the default home screen you have a widget here, which is a clock. You can get rid of that if you tap and hold it. And you can take it up to the remove section and that will delete it. You can also tap your apps button, which will take you to the other apps installed on this device. So these are all the default apps. If you look through them, you can see quite a few familiar and standard apps, specifically from Google, such as a calculator, Google Maps, Google Earth, Google Drive, Google Music, etc. Let's go home. And in fact, on the home screen, they've also given us a folder filled with Google apps such as Gmail, YouTube, Google Music, Navigation, and that sort of thing. And of course, we also have the camera app. Now, if we swipe to the right, we have our Google Play Store, we have our settings, and we have our gallery. So this is where we, our photos will appear. Uh, right now, I don't have anything in there, so we're going to skip that process. Now on the dock, we also have our critical app. So on the left, we have the phone and our contacts. On the right, we have our messages and our internet browser. And of course, in the center, we have that apps button. You can also change these and move these if you want. So you can move, these, move this out of the dock and you can add something else if you want. Now up top, of course, we have Google search. If we just tap in there, we can enter a text search. So we can search for Apple. And this will search either our device or online. So let's just go ahead and search. It brings back several Google hits. Now in addition to search, you also have voice actions with this microphone. Play artist Coldplay. Now I don't have any uh, music on this device, so it's not going to find a whole lot. But if I did, it would basically launch Coldplay either through YouTube or my music app. So let's go to YouTube, see what it finds. Now up top you'll find your notifications and your settings. So on the left side you'll see your notification badges. Right now I don't have anything running so I don't have any notifications. But if you want to access them, all I have to do is swipe down and you'll see them listed here. Now if you want to access your settings, all I have to do is tap the settings icon and it'll bring you right to them. So here you can control a lot of things including turning Wi-Fi on and off, Bluetooth, changing your sound, your display brightness, checking your storage, battery life, your apps, etc, etc. So you get the idea. So if you want to get out of that, all I have to do is tap the home button and you're back to the home screen. Now something also kind of unique to the Galaxy Nexus is the fact that these buttons are located on the screen. They're not part of the bezel. So that means that uh, when you rotate this around, so for example if we go to Safari, we rotate it sideways, you can see they change orientation. Or if you flip the phone around, 
it'll switch back to the right side. So that gives you a lot more flexibility, but that also means that these buttons are constantly moving around depending on how you're holding the device. So some manufacturers have decided to uh, include the, to continue to include these buttons in the bezel. So if you're not familiar with, with what these are, so of course we have the back button, we have the home button, and then we have the recent apps button. So with the recent apps button, you can see everything that you've launched recently. If you want to close them out, just swipe them. Or if you want to launch them, just tap them. Alrighty guys, we can't take a look at the Galaxy Nexus without looking at the iPhone 4S right next to it. So the iPhone 4S has a 3.5 inch LCD screen, of course that Retina display, and the Samsung Galaxy Nexus has that 4.65 inch screen which is Super AMOLED. It's very different technology. But the Super AMOLED screen does have some benefits and some negatives. It does have excellent off-axis view and you can look at it from every angle. The only distortion you see is from that anti-reflective coating on that curved glass screen. In terms of overall dimensionality, the Galaxy Nexus is thinnest at its thinnest point but thicker at its thickest point. So overall the iPhone 4S is still a thinner phone. Now in terms of overall ergonomics, this is where things get a little subjective. Of course, it depends on the size of your hand. I happen to have very large hands. But even for me, that 4.65 inch screen is toward the outer limits of my comfort zone here. If I want to use this device with one hand, I still have to kind of slide it down to my hand to get to the upper corner. Not a big concern, uh, but it's different with the iPhone 4S, which is just about perfect. I can access every part of it with just my thumb. So that's, a, that's to me, that's a very important part. Of, of the design of a phone. It should be able to be used with one hand without kind of having to shuffle it down in order to access every part of it. So after using the Galaxy Nexus for about 24 hours, my first impressions are a mixed bag. Now I really like Android because it integrates well with Google services and Android 4.0 works very well. I do like the features. Uh, it also has that nice large 4.65 inch display which means you have more screen real estate for reading text viewing websites and for using the keyboard. So you have a lot more room for the keyboard. The 3.5 inch screen on the iPhone is a little too small for typing comfortably. I'm always making mistakes, especially in portrait mode. And when you bring up the keyboard, it covers almost half the screen so you can't see what you're doing. Now the disadvantage with the Galaxy Nexus for me is that AMOLED screen versus the uh, LCD screen and that retina display. The AMOLED screen is a lot muddier. It's not as bright or vivid. Okay, it does have very bright and vivid colors, but the uh, background itself, for example, whites look very muddy. Everything has a, a very blue cast to it, and colors are very exaggerated, so there's very poor color accuracy. So this is particularly evident when you compare the iPhone versus the Galaxy Nexus. So for me, the display, even though it's kind of a, a nice, has some nice advantages, that nice deep black color isn't a big selling point for me. I wouldn't buy an AMOLED screen because it's not as vivid as an LCD screen. Hopefully they improve this in the future, but I can understand why AMOLED hasn't been implemented on the iPhone yet. And the other disadvantage to me is the fact that the construction still feels pretty cheap. This is all plastic. Now it feels comfortable to hold. It does feel a little more durable because it is plastic. This bounces instead of cracking or scratching. So maybe this is a little more durable, but of course it does feel a little cheaper. And it doesn't look as nice as the simple glass and steel industrial design of the iPhone. Uh, but, I mean, it's a give and take situation. I really like Android. I really like that large screen. I like the lightweight form factor. But overall, the iPhone 4S, even though it has that small screen, still feels a lot like a much higher quality product. And I do like iOS. I just wish it integrated better with Google services. So that's going to do for me, guys. I'd like to know what you guys think in the, dis in the uh, comments below. So let me know. And I'll see you again in the next video.